This podcast may contain paid advertisements, but more on that later. Welcome to the O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast, where I discuss the nuts and bolts of business and leadership, with a focus on bootstrapping a business from the ground up. This podcast is for all entrepreneurs, bootstrappers, and leaders in all walks of life. My goal is to help you grow both personally and professionally. I am your host, Isaiah O'Connor. Hello everyone, Isaiah here again on the O'Connor Bootstrap Videocast. Again, thank you for bearing with the kind of weird intro and outros. Working on it. Still trying to figure out this video thing, but as I say, an entrepreneur is a person who jumps off a cliff and tries to build an airplane on the way down. So here's hoping that I actually land this plane that I build before I hit it. Anyway, let's go into this. So on my last video cast, I was talking about how I had been working a really low paying job. I, my wife was pregnant with our firstborn. I just listened to the book, 48 Days to the Work You Love, and I decided to start a business with balloons. So let's kind of dig into this a little bit more. So first of all, I had no clue what I was doing in business. but important thing is I really really thought I did I thought I knew what I was doing turns out not so much you see I had a background in management customer service I knew customer service well I knew how to manage a already functioning store I knew how to create work schedules I knew how to read profit and loss statements I knew a lot about running a business in a management in but that does not mean that i really knew a lot about actually things like marketing accounting the finer details of running all the accounting itself and not having an accountant do it and just send reports all this good stuff i had a lot to learn but i had no clue and i jumped off the proverbial cliff and fortunately didn't quite splat when i first told my wife about it she was not exactly what you would call thrilled at me starting my own business but there's really no stopping me and i reluctantly she reluctantly agreed that okay i could start it but as long as i kept my side my business a side job and i would keep looking for a better replacement for my part-time job that i had by the way i forgot to mention that restaurant job i had was only a part-time job as well so it was really really hard part-time income with my wife pregnant i was looking for full-time work and now i decided to start a business and as most often is the case she has a lot more sense than me now you see i had imagined that all i needed was a bag of balloons and a there we go a bag of balloons and a website and maybe a handful of business cards. Oh yeah, and a balloon pump because inflating three, four hundred balloons that are really, really skinny and tiny in a row during an event can get really exhausting. So yeah, a pump. So I got a bag of balloons, a pump. I got a website on Vistaprint, uh, just a standard template design website. Got it all set up and I launched my business and I immediately hit success, overnight success. Everything was amazing and it just worked out perfectly. Of course not. That doesn't work. The sudden overnight successes are never that. And that's for another podcast, which I will get to. If you want, I do have an audio version talking about overnight successes. You can go find that on my audio library over at www.athos.com forward slash I-O-C-P-O-D, all lowercase. But there's a link. It's easier. Anyway, but yeah, so no, it was not a sudden overnight success. It, nothing really happened. Um, the... That really didn't take off. I got a few gigs here, a gig there. I really didn't have a clue what I was really doing. Matter of fact, my original idea was called Unplugged Entertainment. 
and Unplugged Entertainment was a, my idea was I was going to teach kids how to do things that did not require any form of screen to do or plugs or electricity, i.e. juggle, make balloon animals, all that good stuff. And I was thinking about doing like birthday party planning where I would do all the entertainment and I would try to teach the kids something and not just entertain. And it was not a bad idea, I don't think, but it, I was trying to bite off more than I could chew. I was trying to teach kids how to make origami using a language that I was not 100% fluent in. Um, yeah, it was a rough start. The first year I made, I think, around 11 or 10,000 Norwegian kroner. Just for comparison's sake, 10,000 kroner is not even a full month's wages for most Norwegian families. Matter of fact, most jobs will pay out around 20 to 25,000. Decent jobs will pay 30000 and up a month. So while to an American, 10000 kroner sounds like a lot, it's not much. It's roughly equivalent to around 1000 bucks, eight $900 for the whole year. No, not much. So took some learning. And I even went and I got somebody to do some professional pictures. As a matter of fact, let me show you here real quick. Let's see if I can make this work. Share screen. There we go. Now, if you see here, my initial idea was going through and making origami, teaching origami frogs and boxes, different stuff, juggle a little bit. And of course, balloons, balloon animals, balloon apple, as you see. Juggling equipment again. So I made all these little things, got some nice professional photos of these balloons, which looking back at these balloons, they were, matter of fact, 90% of these I barely ever make anymore. There's not much. Those were the coolest balloons I thought I had. And, um, wait, did you guys see all that? Let's see. So that actually worked. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you saw those. I'll go double check. Let's see. Oh, I never actually clicked on the share button. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm still figuring out this still. Anyway, really quickly through again because, A, this is YouTube. It's video. And for those of you on the audio version, I'm just clicking through a whole bunch of different origami designs, a collage of origami stuff, pictures of my juggling equipment, and some pictures of the more basic, but still decently cool, I think, balloon animals that I've made. So made all these pictures, got some pictures, put together a flyer, had a website, and try to keep going. Second year, I made a little bit more. Like 20,000 kroner, not much. Still not even a full month's worth of income for an entire year's of work. And that was not counting expenses. That was 20,000 kroner gross. 20,000, 10,000 kroner gross income before taxes, before everything else. So it was not a lot. And so, yeah, it was, it was rough. Now, after the, about the first year, about two years or so later, life really kicked me out of the nest, pushed me right off that cliff. And 
you see that little part-time job I had that was paying some bills? They went bankrupt, and I lost my job. I had nothing else, so I really pushed into doing my business. And at this point, I had decided to start to just do just balloon animals because that was the only real thing that people really seemed to like. It was the thing I was best at. So I did that. And that was helping, but I now was without a job, a business that was not making any money. And I had a year and a half or almost two-year-old kid my wife was not happy, and, you know, if your wife's not happy, you're not happy. That's how that works. Just just to let you know. And if you don't know that because you're single, you'll find out. Anyway, my wife wasn't happy, which meant I wasn't happy, which meant I needed to do something quickly. And over the last few years, whenever I was approached some bigger businesses about about balloons and being a balloon clown. Yeah, I started wearing clown makeup, put on get a clown outfit, to have extra additional offers for my for my customers. But they they uh, a lot of people said, "Hey, you do balloon animals? Oh, you do balloon twisting? Do you do balloon decor?" Because we really need somebody that can do balloon decor. And initially, I started looking around trying to find other people that were doing balloon decor that could I could work with and get them gigs and recommend and go back and forth. That was my initial plan, which worked okay, but not great. Because again, over and over and over again, do you do decor? Do you do decor? And the answer was always, oh, no, sorry, I don't. Oh, no, sorry, I don't. I was a balloon twister. However, when my company, my company, the restaurant I worked for shut down, I then found myself in a desperate need to make a change and change my wife was said quick. And I'm too stubborn and oftentimes too stupid to listen to my wife on such things. And so I didn't quit. Instead, I went out and sunk money into a balloon decor training course through Qualitex and started learning how to do decor, took the course on DVD, went and took the final exam, passed the final exam on my first try by the skin of my teeth. A rather embarrassing, but kind of funny story. Here's a guy who's trying to get the a classification of certified balloon artist who's never really worked with helium balloons before. And that's part of the training, is helium balloons. So I had to kind of just learn it and fake it. I was inflating balloons and hanging them off the ceiling to get the practice to see kind of the height that I was going for in balloons. Yeah, using the tape. I didn't have money for a helium tank at that point. But I tried anyway. And so I'm sitting there in front of these very well-renowned instructors. A couple of them run a YouTube channel now for Qualtex. They're major guys, major players in the industry, and great guys, fortunately. And I'm sitting in front of all these guys, and I drop a helium balloon. I'm inflating one, and I accidentally let it slip, and I drop it. And the first thing I do is try to catch it and keep it from falling on the ground. Helium balloons go up when you drop them, not down. They go up. And here I am trying to take a test to show that I'm a proficient balloon guy trying to catch a balloon that's floating by reaching underneath it. Not a good look. Just saying. But I did manage to pass the course. They had some other training. They worked with me. They were amazing people. And maybe I'll talk about the way they gave criticism on another time. It was the best constructive criticism I've ever heard. But that course really boosted my business because now I went back and I could say, yes, now I do decor. And this course I did, by the way, which was amazing, wasn't just how to do balloons. It was how to do balloons, how to market, how to price, how to use the helium tank, how to figure out how much helium is in the tank, which is a rather tricky 
all about the balloons, all about the industry, how to close cells, how to do cells, everything you need to do to run a balloon business. And I'd been listening to other business books, but still struggling. This really gave me some good stuff to do. That year, I did 78,000 kroner. The year after that, it was like 150, 160,000. year after that, it was like 290,000. I don't remember exactly. Still not a lot of money, minus expenses. I was still making less. I was averaging about take-home pay, actual take-home after expenses, was still only about a part-time job income with a full-time workload, but part-time job as I was kind of getting into the field of marketing and all that good stuff. So this course really helped change where I was doing. So hang on with this, guys. Recording in progress. Okay, everyone. Sorry about the little glitch. Still getting used to this thing. Recording this live. Well, not live, but I'm recording this. My wife called me. I'm out of town right now. Had to answer. Still working on that. So again, bear with me as I work on this. So anyway, so focus on the balloons. And as also another thing that happened right around here is I discovered and that's another full podcast, but I realized that the name Unplugged Entertainment was not working out so well. People kept thinking I was some sort of band that had no amps or something like that, or just acoustic guitar or something like that. Didn't work out so well, so we, after some talking with another person, Went 100% focused on balloons, and guy in the industry, which you'll hear about, a guy named David Mahoney, suggested I should rebrand, and I agreed. So I rebranded my business into uh, the in English Balloon Event Agency in Norwegian Balloon Event Bureau, and it the rest, as it were, is history. It really, I really discovered I liked, while well, I liked balloon twisting, I really liked balloon decor, and that really accelerated my growth. Now, flash forward, and it's now eight years later since I've started my business. I have a, an employee who just came back uh, this year. It's been crazy because just something that, of course, did not happen the first time I recorded it started this podcast talking about this was COVID. So my business was trucking along. I took in 2019, I took a loss in, I took a loss in revenue while I still increased my customer base because I lost my biggest client, a mall who decided to stop using balloons for variety of regions, income, environmental concerns, etc. So I lost my biggest client. That really hurt. But the long and short of it is, while I lost them as a full-on client, biggest client that was steady income, I lost about 40% of the income for that year. But the year before and the year before, they were representing about 70 to 80% of my income. So yeah, I lost a big client, lost a lot of income, but my growth was still going, so that was good. So 2019 turned into 2020, turned into COVID, turned into my business going into a full-on COVID-induced coma. 90% of my normal events every year, due to year after year after year, massive beach parties, massive events. They always did something every single year and hired me every single year. Cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. All my biggest clients cancelled. A couple of my clients that I had that were big kind of just shut down, went bankrupt, closed, rebranded, whatever. I mean, it, it was a mess. COVID was a 
mess. Not fun, as you can well imagine. But that's okay. Made it through. Made it through. My overhead was very low. Made it through and got through that mess. And things are coming back. Oh, and the employee I have, I had before in 2019. New employee. He had to leave because he was going off to school. He came back and he's back with me and he's really knocking out the park for me, which is great. I'm working at another job. I can't get back to work because I'm out of town for the job I had to take because of COVID. He goes in and he works for me. It's awesome. So now my business is starting to come back in Norway. I've been blessed. I live in Norway, guys. In case you didn't know that, I'm American, so this is aimed at Americans, but I live in Norway. And Norway just lifted all their COVID restrictions. There's no COVID restrictions, no mask mandates, no vaccine mandates. People are getting back to normal. And therefore, they're celebrating. They're getting balloons. And I'm getting a lot of jobs, making some money again. Things are going good. Push through. It's good to push through the hardships. Now, one more thing. Jumping back to a couple of years ago, a friend of mine... A good friend of mine, a guy named Jason Sinclair. We've known each other since, oh shoot, I don't even know how long. We've known each other 20, see we met when we were like, well we met before then. He didn't even remember, he 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 saw me, but when we actually became friends and really started hanging out, I was 18 years old and now oh, I am 43. So we've known each other for 20, what, 24, 25 years? Anyway. We've kept in touch, and he ran his business, started a business, ran a business, got successful, sold a business, started another business, and they started this business called Athos. And he brought me on board. He says, hey, man, I'm starting this business, and we're going to just work it out. We start off wanting to do a lot of business consulting from our experience and our background and how we grew our businesses, what we learned, the lessons we learned, and the trenches the hard way to help other people out. And he started doing this, and then he said, hey, let's start writing a blog for our website. So we started writing a blog together. You can go look at it, athos.com forward slash blog. Go check out. We'll both write on that blog. And then he goes, hey, let's do a podcast. So we did a podcast. And then he goes, you know what? Let's split the podcast. I'll do the Athos Business Podcast, and you can do another podcast. Can you come up with the name? Thought about it. Came up with the term. O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast got that up, and that's been running for a couple of years, and now decided time to move into the video cast. So that's kind of the story of where I come from, where I've been, where I've been through, and kind of bring you into what's going on here. Now, in my original blog about this, I talked about my passions and don't overlook what you do for fun in a hobby. And that's so true. And I'm going to kind of bring it and wrap it up here with this. Or as Mike Rowe says, land this plane. I'm going to start stealing that, I think. Anyway, I'm going to try to bring it in with this. When you're going through a hard time, when life is kicking you in the teeth, because that's where I started the business. I pushed through COVID. It was rough. The whole industry has been rough. Matter of fact, still rough to some degree. Can't get white balloons. White balloons. Supply chain issues. Can't get them from like anybody. But you push through and you look back and you try to find ways out. I mean, first hardship, I can't speak the language in a country, can't get a job. Don't know how to find these other skills that I have. I'm stuck. Then I start a business because I'm stuck. I really bad. And then I lose my job and hardship again. And now I have to step up my business game and really focus on it and try to find a way out. Then still wasn't making a lot of money. Needed to kick it up again. Some more hardship. Rebrand. Boom. Bigger. People are finding me now. By the way, I had a website for two years, and people said, wow, your work's amazing. How come I can't find your website? I was just looking for balloons. Whoops. Now, 
almost every one of my clients these days is finding me on my website or my Facebook page. But mainly on the website now. I'm getting jobs and clients from my website. I mean, just thing after thing after thing. So all these hardship, all this rough waters really has pushed me into a place where I'm succeeding now because of the hardship. And looking back, even now looking back to kind of say where I'm coming from, the message for today, the business lesson, the life lessons is if you're going through a hard time, you know, look around you, go back, even look at your past, look at your history, see what you got, see what talents you got, see what hobbies you did, see what things people seem to like to, that you do that you're skilled and they, it, it draws attention, like twisting balloon animals. And use that to kind of fuel your future success. Use that to push through. And you might find something that's just amazing that can help you break through from what you're doing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a job. I mean, a business that you start up, you could go find a business that you like doing. You can find a better job. It might help you find a different job than the one you hate. That's okay. Just look back, reflect, push through the hardships, and keep going. You'll find something. You will. You will. You just got to keep pushing through. Anyway, guys, talk to you later. We'll see you next week. Next week, I might just upload the interview I did with Dan Miller. Or, or yeah, Dan Miller. There's two guys I, I listen to all the time, Dan Miller and Donald Miller, and I get them reversed. But Dan Miller, I did an interview with Dan Miller, and I will probably be uploading that sometime soon, if not for Thursday. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, look forward to that. and. Uh, Thanks for coming out with this journey. Again, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please comment. Would love to hear from you guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. If you found value in this content, please leave a comment and give us a five-star rating on whichever podcast platform you use. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast platforms. If you would like to support us, you can check out our sponsor links or... If you would like to directly support the show, you can donate or join our membership program at buymeacoffee.com forward slash bootstrap. Of course, it really helps when you share these podcasts as well. If you would like to interact with me and other bootstrappers and leaders, you can join our O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast Facebook group. You have been listening to the O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast and Athos Business Solutions Podcast. For our companion podcast, the Athos Business Podcast, hosted by Jason St. Clair, past episodes, and related blogs, check out our website at www.athos.com, which is www.athoz.com, or atheoz.com. Until next time, I've been your friendly neighborhood entrepreneur, Isaiah O'Connor.